INFJs surely fall prey to stereotypes because of their distinct and complex personality types. They have a limited place in society because of the way certain people see them. But what do INFJs do and possess that disproves these individuals' false assumptions? Here are 10 reasons why real INFJs cause toxic individuals a lot of cognitive dissonance. Number 10, selflessness was viewed as a weakness by toxic people, but not by INFJs. Some people don't want to consider other people's sentiments or give them too much thought since they believe that will only lead to their failure. They believe that showing others compassion and selflessness made people less respectable and more credulous. However, the INFJ may disprove this notion by demonstrating to the rest of the world that striving for selflessness will never prevent one from achieving one's goals. They will demonstrate that cultivating a sense of individual superiority is counterproductive, and that working toward collective success and wishing the best for everyone is preferable. And as toxic individuals observe how INFJs continue to grow in this conviction, things will no longer make sense to them. Number 9. Some people believe that unless they encounter the INFJ, introverts can't lead industries. There has always been a widespread misunderstanding that due to their timidity, introverted personality types cannot surpass extroverts. Most people who hold this opinion are ignorant of INFJs. They have never observed how INFJs consistently outperform other outgoing people in intellectual conversations, in putting forth innovative ideas, and in completing large-scale tasks. It's because they put a lot of heart and thought into what they do, are aware of their role, and take their obligations very seriously. Therefore, even though their personality attributes are rarely required for a job, they can nevertheless move industries and establish standards. Does it aggravate you as an INFP that others at work treat introverts differently? Number 8. Until they witness INFJs making enormous leaps, toxic people assume they are cowards. INFJs are discreetly disruptive. They never settle for mediocre performance or the current quo. They will always be motivated to learn the next skill if they have already mastered one. They consistently aim for the next level after finishing the previous one. This isn't because they're unhappy or unable to settle, rather, it's because they want to keep growing. They are continually moving up the ladder and pursuing innovation, but the top is still unreachable. The INFJ could be anything, who knows. However, since toxic individuals have long undervalued INFJs and believed they were cowards, this difference creates cognitive dissonance. They don't realize INFJs may be anything. These are the folks who ask, if not me, then who? If not, why not? If not now, then when? Contrary to what toxic people believe, they aren't hesitant to question or confront established wisdom. Number 7. INFJs are perceived to be timid by toxic people, which explains why they remain quiet until they hear them talk. INFJs are frequently teased by toxic people for being reserved at work or in school. They said that they lacked the self-assurance to speak up because they felt uninformed and out of place. However, as soon as INFJs communicate their original ideas and bright thoughts, these people begin to question whether their entire existence has been a deception. They are perplexed because what they see no longer matches what they previously believed about INFJs. INFJs method of outlining their ideas situations that toxic people never anticipated occurring include expressing their unusual viewpoints and controlling the entire conversation. They begin to wonder what happened to the shy and low-key persona when they realize how articulate and self-assured INFJs truly are. Furthermore, INFJs won't give a damn what these people think of them, which is the finest part. Do you notice the surprised expression on people's cheeks when you finally speak up if you are an INFJ because they only speak when they have something essential to say, and only if they want to? Number 6. They believed INFJs to be naive, although they are actually smarter than people realize. 
INFJs may seem innocent, but despite how far they've gone, they always maintain their humility and groundedness, which is why they should never be disliked or underestimated. To make people comprehend what they were saying or feel comfortable around them, they would even pretend to be ignorant or dumb themselves down. Unfortunately, toxic individuals take advantage of this alter ego and consider them to be genuinely credulous. INFJs are the most intellectual and intelligent of all personality types, which surprises toxic people. Their tremendous accomplishments and brilliant initiatives surprise the public. They just make their arguments simpler because they don't want to come out as haughty, complex, or scary. Number five, they were surprised to learn how socially adept INFJs are after supposing them to be purely introverts. What toxic people believe about INFJs frequently differs with what they observe, particularly at work and social gatherings. Why? INFJs are adept at acting extroverted when necessary because of this. INFJs easily become exhausted when exposed to prolonged social situations because of their introverted nature, yet they may still strike up engaging talks with experts, tycoons, businessmen, and anybody else who can relate. Even though they have a reserved exterior, they may stun an audience at a conference by speaking clearly and intelligently. They can stand in the back of the room one minute and then take the stage the next. INFJs seem equally capable of performing either, depending on the circumstance. How comfortable are you acting extroverted in specific circumstances as an INFJ? Number four, when they tried to push them, they encountered their strict boundaries. While INFJs are gracefully disruptive, they also have the ability to be graciously dismissive. They are courteous yet don't tread lightly around other people. They are capable of showing others consideration, generosity, and kindness, yet they aren't hesitant to enforce penalties. INFJs are perceptive to other people's feelings, but it doesn't mean they are amenable to falsehoods and deceit. Although INFJs may not enjoy conflict, that doesn't imply they will avoid offending anyone. INFJs will correct toxic people for their unprofessional attitude instead of remaining mute and irritated when they respond sarcastically to their serious talk. INFJs are aware that pursuing harmony in their environment does not require them to compromise their demands or their limits. Their ability to communicate their boundaries with others helps them gain respect, which is why they occasionally manage to surprise toxic people. Number three, until they saw how fervently they felt about some topics, they believed they were uninteresting. Toxic people mistakenly believe INFJs to be boring killjoys or people who are too serious to cope with. Nevertheless, they are actually very emotive and entertaining. It's just that their opinions and thoughts don't frequently mesh with those of others, which prevents them from speaking their minds. Due to this, they tend to project a cold, passive, and frequently uninteresting persona while among other people. Same, poisonous individuals would presume right away that the INFJ's life is uninteresting, and that they are wretched beings without a purpose. They believed that they were pessimistic people incapable of having fun. However, things will cease to make sense to them once they witness how well INFJs get along with kind, non-judgmental people. Do these toxic individuals understand that they are the only kind of individuals who INFJs don't want to be friends with? Number two, they were shocked to see how humble they were after thinking they were haughty. The worst part about toxic people is that they simply judge INFJs by their outward appearance rather than getting to know them on a deeper level. The fact that the immediacy is usually more alluring merely demonstrates how little they understand INFJs. Emotionally mature, humble people are aware that, although if the INFJ must take pride in their accomplishments, they would not be where they are now without the help of others and the collaboration of those they have collaborated with along the way. There is nothing wrong with accepting the credit that is due to them. Similarly, INFJs have the maturity and wisdom to understand that the world does not revolve around them. They have nothing to prove to anyone because they aren't given much respect in the first place. 
Despite this, toxic individuals would continue to display their haughtiness due to their inherent authority and diligence. Number one, they don't fully appreciate how indifferent INFJs are about what other people think before labeling them as people pleasers. While toxic people manage society's perceptions of them, INFJs don't, whereas toxic people are focused with the results of their social interactions. They believe that INFJs think and act like them, which is where they were mistaken. Despite worrying about how they feel, INFJs don't care what other people think of them. They are aware that they can no longer influence how people perceive them. If they have negative opinions of them, that already says more about these people than it does about them. As a result, toxic individuals will be perplexed when speaking with INFJs and learning how little they care about the results of their socialization. They won't even be able to explain where they learned that INFJs are these shy, self-conscious beings who are controlled by cultural acceptance. Do you believe that these folks are just putting their troubles onto you because you are an INFJ? INFJs defy stereotypes, which is a significant source of cognitive dissonance for toxic people. People who are toxic to them may believe that everything they believed about INFJs in general was a lie because of the way they interact with others, and how their quality of life is manifested. Do you like to challenge preconceptions as an INFJ? Do you relish the bewildered expressions toxic people display when you show them to be mistaken?